Okay, so for our first DIY gift, we are going to make this hanging photo frame. First, you're going to need a photo frame. Duh. Use one that has a pretty thick frame so you have space to hang your photos. We want to start by removing the frame insert and I'm going to use that piece of paper that normally comes in frames as a backing for my background. Simply use some decorative paper or contact paper to create your background. I went with some palm leaves but I think a marble pattern would look really cool as well. So I just started by peeling off the contact paper to stick it to the backing paper but this was really cheap contact paper and turns out it was really transparent so you can see the little grey squares through it so take two. I'm keeping the contact paper as it is and just taking it to the backing paper instead and cutting off the excess and problem solved. So the contact paper is perfectly fine as it was but I have a lot of gold accents in my apartment and I had just finished watching Lord DIY's video where she was gold dipping things so I felt like adding some gold to my background. I'm just using a gold coloured marker and outlining the palm leaves. Next up we want to add some push pins to the inside of our frame. Make sure to measure these out and have them line up with one another so everything's even. And then we just take some twine and tie each end around the push pin to create a line where we can hang our photos. Now we just want to reassemble our photo frame and it's ready to hang some photos. I really wanted to hang some Polaroids but my Polaroid printer wouldn't work for me so I got these cropped photos printed instead of me and my friend Sarah. She's the one I'm giving this to because I am in fact single. Valentine's Day is Galentine's Day for me. Simply hang some photos of you and the person you're gifting this to with some pics and here is the finished hanging photo frame. DIY gift is perfect for any plant lover in your life. Now if you are confident with your handwriting you can go ahead and skip this step but I have possibly the world's second messiest handwriting. So I'm printing out a cute aloe vera pun quote, scribbling some charcoal on the back, taping it to a white pot and then scratching the words so the charcoal transfers onto the pot. Take off the paper and we are left with a charcoal template to colour in. I started off going over the words with a permanent marker, then just used a damp cotton ball to wipe off the charcoal. As you can see, the permanent marker isn't completely opaque, so I'm going to paint over the top of it with some black acrylic paint. And now, decorate your pot however you like. I decided to decorate my pot by painting tiny pots on it. This took a very long time. If you're short on time, you can totally go for a more basic pattern like spots or stripes. I just like to make things difficult for myself. Now acrylic paint is not water resistant so I'm adding a coat of Mod Podge to seal in our design. Keep in mind Mod Podge is water resistant, not waterproof. So it holds up if a bit of water gets on it whilst watering the plant, but you know, don't drown your paint job because it will come off. Okay, time to add our plant. I would 100% recommend doing this outside. But I live in an apartment and don't really have an outdoor area to do this in. Also, if you're using aloe vera, make sure you use a cacti and succulent potting mix. And that your pot has a hole in the bottom to allow for adequate soil drainage. And here we have our finished aloe vera gift. gift I've seen in a lot of stores but we're doing it DIY style and that is love coupons. We want to start off by taking some white card and cutting out what we want our coupons to look like. I started by cutting out one card and using that as a template for the rest. Remember to leave two cards slightly longer for our front and back card covers. Next up I'm grabbing a spare piece of paper and using it as a template for the orange coupon design bit. You'll see in a second what I mean. You can totally just draw your design straight onto the cards but creating a template first means that they'll all be even. Now, like with the pot plan, I've printed out what I want each coupon to say because my handwriting is super messy. I do still want them to look handwritten instead of printed though so I'm etching the outline of each text into the card then filling it in with a black marker. If you've got neat handwriting, just go ahead and save some time and write cute date ideas directly onto the coupon. The idea is when the gift receiver wants that cute date idea on the coupon, they simply tear it off from the book and give it to you. 
I'm sure you know how coupons work. Now it's time to design our front cover. Remember to leave a space on the left hand side where we can bind our coupons together. And then to bind the coupons together, you want to pierce two holes either with a needle or a skewer, thread through some twine starting from the back and going through each coupon, then tie the two ends together at the front. And your coupon book is now ready to be given to your loved one. The next DIY gift idea is an edible bouquet. You want to start off by taking a heart shaped chocolate, lining the center with hot glue, then adding a skewer and chocolate on top. If you work quick enough, the hot glue will melt the chocolate so that the two chocolates sit flat against each other. Repeat this process until you have a bunch of chocolates on skewers and feel free to use varying sized chocolates as well. In groups of three to four, take the skewers together to create the center of our flowers. Then you just want to take a few different colored sheets of tissue paper, cut them into smaller rectangles, then wrap them around our chocolates and secure it in place with either sticky tape or an elastic band. Also feel free to trim off any pointy edges on the tissue paper. Now just repeat this for all your chocolate bunches. Once all the chocolate bunches have been transformed into tissue paper flowers, you want to bunch them together with either tape or an elastic band. Then wrap your bouquet in some pretty paper. I went with this iridescent cellophane and gold foil paper. Then secure that with a ribbon and our edible bouquet is now complete. For our last two DIY gift ideas, I have these easy necklaces. One could be more masculine and one more feminine, but who really cares about gender stereotypes in 2020? For this first necklace, you want to start by gluing two crystal points together to form a heart. You also want to use craft glue for this because hot glue will just peel off. Once the glue is dried, take some jewelry wire and wrap it around our crystal heart in random directions. Just make sure at some point you create a loop at the top for our necklace chain to thread through. Once you're happy with how the heart crystal is looking, cut the wire using wire cutters and add a dollop of glue to the end of the wire to smooth out any now just thread through a necklace chain and here is our first finished necklace. For our last DIY, you want to grab two metal washers. These were literally 40 cents each. And you simply want to start by engraving one washer with your initials and your boyfriend or girlfriend's initials. And engrave the other washer with a meaningful date. Turns out engraving is a lot harder than I thought, so team that with my messy handwriting and it ends in a bit of a disaster. So if you are not confident with engraving, there are stores that will engrave things for you. I kind of wish I'd paid someone else to do this neatly, but oh well. Next you want to take a piece of jewelry leather and loop it through both washes and then knot each end on the other side of the leather. This will make the length of the necklace adjustable. And here we have our finished final DIY gift. 